Ladies and gentlemen, the worst freaking company on the planet that isn't Niji Sanji, uh, Blizzard. <laughs> Apparently is worse than we thought, all right? Now, this has been a major discussion point by a lot of people. Video, big freaking video, documentary style, was dropped by Big Boss. I don't know really what's going on. I'm familiar with uh, Blizzard having uh, a, bit, a bit of an issue in the past in regards to, you know, little things like being cringe and uh, sexual assault. Yeah, those two things should not be in the same category, but that's how it is what it is. So let's see what we got here. Everyone has been telling me I needed to watch this video. Uh, let's see what we got. The year is 2023, and a once beloved- uh, He's just wrong. ...avid game developer's reputation is in absolute freefall. Boo! Yeah, uh, it all happened when they started not stopping their employees from, uh, you know, doing things like being cringe and uh, raping people. And also they made shitty games. What was at one point probably the highest rated developer in the industry? People loved Blizzard. A studio that pumped out classic after classic. Dude, Warcraft, Halo. Halo? Di Diablo. Di Warcraft, Diablo. Overwatch. Has now become the home of incomprehensible horror. From the Diablo mobile games, developed to siphon money off their viewer bases, to freaking, you know, rape. God damn it. For greed, broken promises. Remember when I brought up the liar shirt they made? Oh yeah! Dude, they had, wait, what, what was that? Um, bl bl uh, Blizzard liar shirt. I remember this. Dude, that they, <laughs> this is crazy. I remember when they did this. This was absolutely insane. Went this all down. All right, so Blizzard released a shirt, right? And uh, like the Blizzard shirt, but it spells liar in pink subconsciously using LGBT people as a shield for terrible things happening, using like the, the, the trans flag colors to write liar on their shirt. That's like, holy shit, man. That, if that was an accident or a coincidence, that's insane. Botched releases, stolen Preston. This is the story of Blizzard God Entertainment. Damn. All right, let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Someone needed to sit down and make a whole good ass documentary on this shit. Blizzard is a disaster. It's like an actual dumpster fire disaster. All right, let's do it. Let's the do year it. is 90. Here, here, Nuxalore coming back. This time, lore of a company that imploded. 91. And three guys have just graduated from the University of California. All right. Alan Adham, All right. Michael Morhaime, right. and Frank Pierce. They get together to create a game development studio in Irvine. Lots of gay sex. With Silicon and Synapse. The name that's, is... That's a fucking awful name. Holy shit. Deeply philosophical and well thought out. Yeah, with right. Silicon representing the building block of a computer. We get it. <laughs> and Synapse, the building block of a brain. However, people keep mistaking the silicon part for the material in breast implants. <laughs> God, <we're not laughs> silicon like the boobs? Anyway, they spent the first few years porting games to different systems, but soon begin producing their own original games, oh. with the Lost Vikings in 1992 Never heard and it. Rock and Roll Racing in 1993. Never heard of Eventually, it. they get sick of constantly being mixed up with women's breasts, so they decide to switch things up. Honestly, though, like, being mixed up with women's breasts, that's that's pretty good, though. Like, let's be real, that's not bad. Changing their name to Chaos Studios. That's pretty badass. However, a company based in Florida already has the trademark, and they're no. now asking for $100,000. They then decide to change the studio's name to Ogre Studios. Wait, is this real? Did they actually change their names all this stuff? That's crazy. But in 1994, they're acquired by a holding company for a few million dollars, and turns out, their new owners aren't a fan of the new name. Okay, so they flip through a dictionary and oh my God, there it is. In 1994. That's crazy. I didn't know they went through all those cr dumb names. Oh my God. Blizzard releases their first self-published title, a real-time strategy yeah, game yeah. called Warcraft Orcs and Humans. Turns out it was incredibly successful. And it's an instant success. It's one of the earliest real-time strategy games to hit shelves, and it's a blast. It also has a modem and LAN multiplayer, meaning people can get together and go ham. And they get- Remember when you needed to play video games with people, you actually had to sit next to them? Oh God. Game does well, selling 100,000 copies in the first year. Pretty good. Pretty good. For the first time, Blizzard Entertainment Made is money. profitable. Oh. They follow it up with Warcraft 2 in 19. The funny thing is, every every company starts off as like wholesome and nice and like, oh hey, we're starting off because we're passionate about this. And then, then they devolve into freaking, you know, goddamn greed buckets of shit. It's, it's the Niji Sanji treatment. It's the, the fucking every, every industry. It's like it all starts off nice and wholesome, in love with the thing, passionate, and then they character develop into this fucking degenerate douchebag that just wants money. 
1995. It's another home run, critically acclaimed, and now selling over a million copies damn, in its first year. Damn. Nice. It's now Very 1996. Nice. And They're the growing. They'll never slow down. A company called Condor Games is looking for a publisher for their nearly complete game, Diablo. Oh, Blizzard has a little look, and they like. So they buy them and rename them Blizzard North. Right. It's also Based. at this point that Blizzard notices something. Warcraft 2 had picked up a lasting online player base, mostly through third-party networks that connected players over this magic new thing called the internet. So they decide to nice. make their own, Battle.net. Its original functionality is very simple, with the ability for players to chat to each other awesome. and search for a match. But on December 31st, 1996... They've just like done good stuff, made good decisions, and then at some point they just absolutely implode. It's insane. It launches alongside Diablo, and people log on and play. Diablo is a massive hit, also selling over a million copies within its Brother. first year. In 1998, Blizzard launches StarCraft, an RTS set in space. It sells bigly and quickly grows a massive esports scene. That's actually insane. They were literally banger after banger after being named after breast implants. They, they really went crazy. That's insane. And the absolute power just corrupted them absolutely. It's wild. Diablo 2 launches in 2000. Another smash hit. Dude, these people are so freaking rich right now. It's insane. It reaches almost 3 million sales by the end of the year, becoming the fastest selling PC game of all time. Oh, I didn't know that it was so big. In 2002, Warcraft is back. And now it has an extra dimension. Warcraft 3 sells 1 million units in just Dude. one month, Dude. immediately becoming the new fastest selling PC game. Game. Holy shit, I didn't realize Blizzard was that successful. Like, I knew these games were big, but I really didn't know that Blizzard was like, like, I knew it was a juggernaut, but this is W after W. It also releases with a campaign editor, which spawns a series of popular mods like Defense of the Ancients. And after its expansion in 2003, it's all hands on deck for Blizzard's next project. Dude. The year is 2004, and Blizzard is getting ready to release its it's biggest happening. game yet. They'd seen how big MMOs like EverQuest World began, of Warcraft! And thought they'd try their hand. And See, I, I thought World of Warcraft was like their big, huge break, but it, they've just literally been W after W. It's crazy to see a, a company this successful fail as miserably as it has been over the last two years. Nothing is sacred, right? It's like they said uh, the banks wouldn't fa fail. The banks are too big to fail right before the Great Depression, you know? Like, um, that's insane to think that they were so big and so successful. They literally were worth millions and millions of dollars. And look at them now, a laughingstock dumpster fire full of scandals and, and shitty games. Of the $60 million. And even worse, cringe. In five years of work, it's finally nearing release. And in November 2004, World of Warcraft launches. God damn. And it takes the world by storm. Yeah, th this, this is insane. World of Warcraft is, is insane. Smashing even Blizzard's forecasts. There are so many players trying to log on in the first week that their servers have a complete meltdown. Dude, that was li live reaction of Nags playing World there of There are so many players trying to log on in the first week <laughs> that their servers have a complete meltdown. With server queues reaching the thousands. Get past the queues wow. and actually into a game. Well, now you're greeted with a ton of latency issues and a probable disconnection, meaning you're now back on that queue screen. After the initial server problems are ironed out and people Dude, can- no one, I don't, they didn't expect it to be nearly this size. Actually play. The game sucks people in en masse. Fans are very enthusiastic. It hoovers up awards left, right, yeah, and center. It, uh, and World of Warcraft, even today it's big, but like to think about what it was at that point, early MMOs like literally changed the world changed gaming. Sells a ton of copies, reaching almost 6 million sales by God, the end of its first damn. year. World of Warcraft isn't like your average game though. Instead of simply buying a copy, players have to pay a $15 monthly subscription fee to play. Literally so smart. Literally. Actually insane. Actually insane. Like, God. Infinite money hack. What could possibly go wrong for them now? 6 million times 15 every month. And Blizzard isn't doing too badly. Everyone is playing the game, and its ads go on to feature a ton of celebrities. I'm Chuck Norris, and I approve this game. That's crazy. It's insane how massive it was. Oh my god, thank you. Dude, crazy. And others like Vin Diesel, William Shatner, Henry Cavill, Mila Kunis, and Dave Chappelle announce their addictions in various interviews. World of Warcraft is everywhere. It, it literally insane. Oh my god, dude. Actually crazy. Actually crazy. Holy shit. 
They got Chuck freaking Norris. Gee, damn it! World of Warcraft would also result in the launch of BlizzCon in 2005, a massive annual convention that would feature big musical acts and announcements for Blizzard's future games. Fans could also ask the devs questions and were sometimes even featured. At this point, <laughs> God damn, he has to stop that. First, of all, this video is fucking fire. Like the the music, the audio mixing, like dude is actually killing it. What a great video! It is among the all time greats of gaming. Well, all time greats of gaming. It literally is the it's the king. World of Warcraft was an actual king of gaming. The fact that it was so um so massive to the point that uh like it got South Park episodes. It got a uh, dude. It even got into drama. Didn't people? Didn't someone? Uh, someone was like a did a shooting in a mall like he actually killed people and uh they blamed it on world of warcraft's violent addiction right like it, it was the game that defined gaming every game a smash hit they could do no wrong that was epic foreshadowing by the way but first flying a plane is easy war thunder is our sponsor but in war Th am i good am i good i'm so good i am so good i'm so good. pre-watch pre-watch shut the fuck up modern blizzard baby modern blizzard the year is it's actually crazy it's crazy i'm really glad that he spent like the last seven minutes setting the stage for us as to um how massive, successful, beloved they were, and like virtually unproblematic. They worked with everyone so that we could really understand the downfall. It's now 2006. World of Warcraft has almost 10 million active subscribers and is bringing in 10 million active subscribers. And that's with what, a, a 15, $15 a month fee, right? That's, that's $150 million a month. Dude, these people made so much money. Like, fuck you money. That's crazy. Like, how could someone fail at that point? A ton of money. $150 million a month! So naturally, it had turned a few heads. One of those heads, Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision. Oh now in God. 2006, Activision had made good tracks in just about every genre of games, except one. And one that MMOs. was now booming, the MMO. Yes, With sir. Warcraft currently bringing in over a billion dollars a year and sub Shit. subscriptions alone. It's only a sweet $1.8 billion a year in subscriptions. Forget the sales and all that. He's interested. Now at this point, Blizzard has changed hands numerous times and is now owned by a company called Vivendi. So Kotick approaches God, Vivendi yeah. with a proposition. Vivendi receives money, Activision receives Blizzard. I love how he phrases it. They offered to buy the company. <laughs> However, Vivendi says no. Instead, well, you know, they're only making billions of dollars a year, so. Ed, Vivendi offers to merge their gaming subdivision with Activision, with Vivendi owning a majority share in the resulting company. And after a brief hesitation from Kotick, in 2008, God, the deal closes. Crazy. Crazy to think Blizzard comes out of nowhere, nowhere, banger after banger, and merges with Blizzard. And merges with Activision. Like, dude. Activision Blizzard opened. Dude, what great editing. This video is edited so well. Every frame is a meme. Its doors with Kotick as CEO. And Activision and Blizzard, now its two subsidiaries. Blizzard would supposedly retain most of its autonomy and keep their CEO, co founder Michael Moreheim. It's now 2010, and Blizzard has gone from just under 500 employees before the launch of World of Warcraft to now over 4,600. Shit, that's a lot of people to get sexually assaulted. Uh, I mean, to, to, to pay. It's a lot, of, a lot of employees, is what I'm saying, to keep happy. The majority of whom are preparing for the launch of StarCraft II in July and the third major Warcraft expansion, Cataclysm, in December. Now, these launches were not small. Warcraft had been hitting peak after peak of players and was now at 12 million monthly subscribers. Fuck, bro. Dude! That's so much money! $180 million a month! That's insane! And StarCraft 2's sales projections are also sizable. But Blizzard currently has a problem. Their forums. They're a little bit toxic. Oh my god. Blizzard has a big team of moderators, but <laughs> But it wasn't enough! But according to them, this still wasn't enough. So behind the scenes, they get brainstorming. And someone has a brilliant idea. How about we just force everyone that posts on our forums to use their real first and last name? Honestly, I feel like this is an idea that every social media comes up with every once in a while. Like Twitter wants you to put your ID into Twitter now. Like, um, I feel like every single, every single company goes through that change where they end, where they're in the, the real ID era. Like, 
on first glance, it's like so based, right? Like, holy shit. If they're using their real names, they're not just gonna, you know, give you death threats and make face pet fake pedophile allegations because this is their real name. They're actually gonna face repercussions. This is great. And then you realize that half the beauty of the internet, the anonymity of it, is gone. <laughs> like, dude. Genius. Yeah. And in July 2010, real ID is unveiled and people absolutely hate it. And the crazy thing is, once you make enemies like Blizzard just did with all these people, like, like you know, that don't want to get mass doxxed, right? Um, so, uh, dude, suddenly they have enemies. They're not just making these games that everyone's loving. Suddenly they have enemies. And once you have enemies, once you have people that want you dead, they will do everything in their power. They will do everything in their goddamn little power on the era of social media on the internet to absolutely annihilate it. And uh... so in an attempt to sell the idea to players, Blizzard's community manager posts his full name on the forum. See guys, it's fine. Don't worry, he posted his full name and nothing bad will happen to him. But almost instantly, people descend on the forum and get to work. And within mere minutes, they find and publish his home address, phone number, age, Facebook, family names, and a list of his favorite music and movies. Well, that taught him a lesson, I guess. Dude, that sucks. I, I oh, fuck, dude. Oh, Lord. Everything's fine. Everything's burning. Okay, you know what? Fair enough. Maybe this real ID thing isn't a good idea after all. Wow. And after just a few days of being announced, real ID is scrapped entirely. But what's so crazy is the damage was done. The damage to the reputation was already done. They already have enemies. It doesn't matter that real ID wasn't incorporated at the end. What matters is they wanted to incorporate it. What matters is that they are not on the side of the gamers. By 2009, the Warcraft 3... And mind you, that, that's like a little thing compared to what ends up happening. Holy shit. Defense of the Ancients had gained a significant following and had even spawned a whole new genre of games, MOBAs. For much of that time, yeah. Blizzard had paid little attention to the mod or the game. But the success of the recently launched League of Legends could no longer be ignored. <laughs> League of Legends changed everything. And Blizzard finally stepped. Like, holy shit, all that hentai. In, starting work on their take on the genre, titled Blizzard Dota. Around the same time, and Valve wants to make their own MOBA. that hired the head dev of the original Dota mod, snapped up the Dota trademark, really? and they're calling oh, their new game Dota. They just put title original on Dota mod, snapped up. Dude, no, no! The Dota trademark, and they're calling calling their new game Dota 2. Blizzard is furious. So in 2012, they file a statement of opposition, arguing that the name Defense of the Ancients was associated exclusively with Warcraft due to it being made in their map editor. However, uh... this argument has issues. See, the mod was created in Warcraft 3's map editor, but that map editor had no specific terms and conditions on ownership of That's set- That's crazy! They literally made a game on Warcraft's map editor, except Warcraft's map editor never had rules to keep the IPs of the games made there, so they literally made the ultimate competition with the software of their competitor. Oh my god, they just got royally screwed. See, but here's the thing, they obviously don't- They've gotten to the point that they don't give a shit about the user experience, anymore right just like just like they have proven just like they have proven by the fact that they tried to in introduce the real id thing um the the real id gimmick uh they have already proved that they don't have the care and love and compassion for the player at the absolute forefront the absolute love and care is the money that is going into their pocket so right now dota 2 happens based on their thing if they would have just let it happen they would have been really appreciated I think they would have been really respected if they would have just let it exist. But by the fact that they they felt like they needed it, and by the way, I get their perspective, right? It's using your shit to make something. Like, I get it. They got absolutely bamboozled, but again, they're going against the player. Their enemies are the enjoyers of the game. Anyone that likes Dota 2 is gonna hate Blizzard now, right? And they keep making decisions like this that just slowly but surely paint themselves as the opposition of the gamers. And you can never defeat a gamer. Ed maps, IP, and concepts. They don't even lose their virginity because they never lose. End up settling out of court a few months after, with Valve getting the commercial rights to the term Dota, and Dota 2 releases in 2012. It's massively and goes on to be an esports giant. Yeah, Blizzard Dota. gets non-commercial use of the title for its community and renames Blizzard Dota to Heroes of the Storm, which releases in 2015. And which isn't even remotely as big as Dota 2. And support is canned three years later. Blizzard would change its licensing agreements for all future games 
games to include their ownership of player-created maps. Dude, they had to make an entire new clause in their fucking uh, terms and conditions that if you make shit on their, on their game, then they own it. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. In an attempt to avoid this ever happening again. It's 2012, and the massively anticipated sequel to Diablo 2 is looking like it's releasing this year. Diablo. Its development had been a bit rocky, with its dev team, at least it's not Diablo 4, oh god, Blizzard North being canned in 2005, along with their version of the game. But on the 15th of May 2012, the rebooted Diablo 3 launches. The oh, game god. is horrendous. For one, oh, its launch is horrific. The game is online only. By the way, this is the first time. Like, think about it, right? Before before everything went down, before everything happened, they were the most beloved thing out there, okay? They made fucking World of Warcraft, Diablo 1, Diablo 2. They were loved. It's so loved. And then, between the launches of Warcraft, which was massively popular, making $200 million a month. A month on subscriptions alone. Forget buying the game. And this is absolutely insane. So loved. They made a decision about the, the new IP thing. Like you have to put in your actual ID purely so that they could stop and silence criticism, okay? Then a beloved game like Dota 2, they try to take down, even though it was literally the brainchild of someone else despite using their own shit. Then they release an absolutely awful game, Diablo 3, and they're done. Like they, they were making so much money. They were so massive. They were a juggernaut. They were beloved. They collabed with every celebrity on the planet to promote a World of Warcraft to immediately in the shitter a year later. And turns out there are massive server issues. People are spamming their login details over and over only to be kicked out by error 37. No. What's worse, there's no queue system in place. So you have to manually retry every minute. Bro. This issue takes over a week to fix. Then there's the auction house here. Loot can be bought and sold. Oh, dude, I remember the auction house. Oh, those greedy bastards. Holy shit. Using your mum's credit card. Activision Blizzard gets filthy rich, while the balancing gets obliterated. Here's the thing. Ultimately, it just became a make money idea, right? It's all about making the money. All about making the motherfucking money. End game content is also essentially non-existent. However, the game sells almost 4 million copies and it's purely based on IP. This is the people that were making remakes on Disney shows because you know, you know how every remake on every Disney show actually made money? until people started realizing, wait a second, these remakes are actually shit. Uh, like, and then they stopped making them. Like Lion King remake made money, for example, and that wasn't good. But just by using a popular name, that's what Blizzard was doing. But that's, that's a sign of the end. First 24 hours, and over time, slowly makes a turnaround. In 2014, the real money auction house is closed, and yeah, Blizzard- because it was essentially gambling. Blizzard launches Reaper of Souls, an add-on praised almost unanimously. They're ready to make a second add-on to the game, but management says no. Apparently, executives see the Dude. game as a massive failure. Dude, that's crazy! Uh, this is why they say Activision killed Blizzard. And demand devs jump ship. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. The year is now 2015. The past 10 years had seen massive expansions to Warcraft, including controversial changes to the game and its mechanics. And player numbers reflect that, now being in steep decline. A growing number of players long to go back to the days of vanilla. Version 1 of the game, back in 2004. Oh, One fan even floats the idea to Blizzard themselves at BlizzCon 2013. Here's how that goes. Have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. You hear people like the idea because people wanted to play the game the way it was. Not the bastardized, changed version of what it is now. Oh. Okay then. No! <laughs> just no! Oh, just hit him with the no! Oh. We'll just make one ourselves. And the fan-made Nostalrius vanilla server goes online in February 2015. Bro! Running version Dude, 1. Fan, fan-made stuff is always so cool to me. It's like, oh, okay. You don't want to make millions of dollars based on that? We'll do it ourselves. 1.12, a month after the original launch. It's not long before the server gets massively popular, with almost a million accounts registered. It's also not long before Blizzard catches wind and brings the hammer down. Of course, obviously. Their lawyers send them a cease and desist in 2016, and the server is promptly shut down, realizing they were- That's uh, every time, bro. Every time. They just go- See, but here's the thing. They've become an enemy to the gamers. Like, they'll make the games, but they are an enemy to the gamers. It's so interesting how, how PR works that way, that it's like a snowball effect. That one thing just leads to the next, to the next, to the next. We're completely 
wrong about vanilla Warcraft, Blizzard do a full 180 and announce Warcraft Classic in 2017. Yeah! Only after a literal fan had to do that shit. Back in 2007, Blizzard started work on a huge MMO called Project Titan. It was I have never heard of that somehow, what? Described as a combination of Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress, and The Sims. But development led nowhere, and six years later, the plug is pulled. Well, that's <laughs> that's why I never heard of it. They finally started listening to fans. Oh, that's good. After every single person in their, uh, all the, all the Blizzard employees were already sexually assaulted. Now they're starting to listen to fans. Oh, that's great. Uh, I, I vote they stop get letting their uh, employees get sexually assaulted as a fan. A massive failure on Blizzard's part and a major internal embarrassment. However, the team behind it would attempt to rework the remains of the story and assets into another project. And in 2016, Overwatch, Overwatch Dude, Overwatch was incredible. It its was shelves, so big. And it's amazing. It's critically acclaimed across the board Dude, and massively popular. Dude, now they finally have competition with uh, League of Legends, because I'll be honest, the Overwatch porn is better than the League of Legends porn. I know, I know, controversial, but that's just true. Quickly becoming one of the most popular esports titles on the market. That, paired with their genre pioneer and card game Hearthstone back in- No way, Hearthstone was Blizzard? That's crazy. Wow, they're, they're huge. 2014 that now has almost 100 million players and Blizzard is looking strong. However, there are oh, however, Overwatch died very problems brewing. See, Overwatch was the last big game they'd had in the pipeline for a while. And uh, they realized- the last big game they would ever have. As they don't have much to show off for BlizzCon 2018. So Blizzard rushes to find something to show off. Got Diablo it. 4. Fast forward to November 2018, and their presentation is ready to go. Oh God, they sprinkle- it's so bad. If it's the one I'm thinking of- If it's the one I'm thinking of, it's so bad! Diablo 4 will be available on mobile phones. And everyone's like, huh? And they're like, what, do you not have phones? A few niche -er announcements here and there, like a remastered Warcraft 3, but they have one big announcement centerpiece. This is the one, dude! I cannot believe it! Oh yeah, yeah, this one. Oh god. Peace. After six long years, a brand new Diablo. Oh yeah. For mobile. Bruh. <laughs> yep, this is the one I was thinking of. This is the one I was thinking of. Like, look, Diablo 2, come play the mobile game that has nothing to do. Uh... I I'm amazed, honestly, it's this bad. This is fucking insane. Oh God, look at Asmongold before, before, <laughs> before he became what he is. I, I don't even know like what to even say about this. Just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? God damn, God damn. And the ultimate response. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. What, do you not have phones? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys- The best combat. I was waiting for that. You guys have phones, right? Do you like not have phones? The game eventually launches, and it's bad. Ben. Firstly, it's not even developed by Blizzard, but their Chinese partner NetEase. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. And turns out, it's monetized to the tits. It costs- To the tits and beyond, bro. To level up your character, you need $500,000 to level up your character to max- It's over half a million dollars to max out a single character, and becomes the worst rated game ever on Metacritic. That's ever, of all time. That's including the some indie pieces of shit that, that people made and look like ass, okay? By 2018, fans are noticing something. Activision Blizzard had been creeping, and Blizzard was changing. See, back in 2013, Active Blizzard had bought back the remaining Vivendi shares for about $7 billion, meaning they, and by extension, Bobby Kotick, now had complete control of both oh Activision my God, and it's Blizzard. Over. Fast forward to 2018, and this creeping had only got worse. Because of the slowdown in game releases, Blizzard revenues are taking an absolute nosedive. So Active Blizzard steps in. Dude, I love, I love this guy's presentation, dude. It pushes the company to cut costs and gets them to produce games at a faster pace. With Kotick apparently installing his own executives bro, within Blizzard bro. to ensure that. Apparently, tired of Active Blizzard's meddling, Blizzard co-founder Mike Morhaime steps down as president and CEO Damn, and leaves the company after 27 years of work. That, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. When the people that are passionate about the craft that joined the company, that created the company, that have been working with this company before it was profitable, when they decide to leave 10 years later, not a good sign. In fact, quite the opposite of that, really. It's like when the... Uh, the <laughs> Netflix avatar, right? When the when the original cartoon avatar writers were supposed to work on it and they saw the vision and direction that the Netflix one was going and they were like, no, no, we don't want to work with this at all. We don't want to be associated with this. No, we're leaving. When they said that, I knew it would be shit. Okay, now that it's out, it's shit. 
Surprise. He's succeeded by Warcraft's executive producer, J. Allen Brack. This guy. And by the way, you don't want to, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. Oh, I love it when people tell me what they what, uh, what, what I don't actually want. It's my favorite thing ever. God, I love when people do that. It's, it's like when you go to the restaurant and they're like, oh, what would you like to order, sir? It's like, oh, I would like a general tout chicken. You don't want to do that. I'm going to get you a dumpling. Uh... No, I fuck. <laughs> what? No, I want. I I'm here to order a General Tao chicken. Y you think you want a General Tao chicken? You actually don't. You want a dumpling? I'll get you a dumpling. And as soon as this happens, we accelerate. The company immediately prioritizes cutting costs, and the heroes of the storm's development team is outright oh, annihilated. No! Its esports league is also scrapped. That's crazy. What the fuck? Right before its 2019 season. As a result, entire teams commentators and support staff are suddenly left jobless that's insane it's wild to see this failure it's wild to see them fail this dramatically this is like a dynamic failure a failure of massive proportions and again let me remind you this is a company that was making billions of dollars a year on just the paid subscriptions for world of warcraft okay like money does not equal success look at niji sanji they have 200 freaking vtuber talents making hundreds of millions of dollars a year uh yes i've seen the finances they're a three billion dollar company okay and they, they're just eating shit right now like it's insane to see because everyone thinks that some things are too big to fail or too rich to fail and i end up falling into that mindset as well i end up feeling that way very often also when i'm going up against something that i think is relatively scary and large uh i i find myself in that headspace too and i need to keep reminding myself that that is so not true that is so not true especially in the landscape of today with social media and the news not purely being curated by little pockets of butt fuckery and liars and anyone could report anyone could talk anyone could say things it's like i don't want to say what this means for pokemon in the future but dude the fact that pal world was so successful goes to show that pokemon doesn't have the stranglehold on the market that they think they do turns out an incredibly bad pr move is not negligible. And despite 2018 being a record year for Active Blizzard profits, they lay off 800. It's it's an important lesson, honestly. It's like you know, uh, I always preach how anyone could succeed. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you come from. You can succeed. You try your goddamn hardest. You work so freaking hard, and you can succeed. Anyone can succeed. It's an inspirational message, but it's just as equally true as anyone can fail. It doesn't matter how you are. Uh, the, the banks failed before the Great Depression when they were too big to fail. I, uh, I said that earlier in the reaction. But, dude, anyone can fail. It's crazy. It's crazy to see the two sides of the same coin like that. 100 employees, almost 10% of the company. They begin rehiring the exact same jobs a couple of years later. Oh my god, dude. So going into 2019, people are not happy. But turns out, over on the other but side of the world, and things are happening in Hong Kong, they're not good. What? Their government has- What does that have to do with Blizzard? Where is this going? ...posed a bill that would give China more authority over them, and that's not too popular. <laughs> not too popular. Yeah, guys, did you hear about the Hong Kong drama? Guys, did you hear about the Russia-Ukraine drama that's been going on? Dude, did you hear about that 9-11 drama that happened back in 2001? That's crazy. At the same time, Hong Kong native Blitz Chung is participating in Hearthstone's eSports League. He wins and uses the post-game interview to show his support for the protests. Oh, I remember this! I didn't think this had anything to do with Blizzard, but yeah. No. Great, but as Hong soon Kong. as he says it, something happens. See, Blizzard has a huge player base in China. And to keep that player base available... <laughs> The China corruption. The China corruption. I forgot about this. Right, right, right. This is the same thing that happened basically to Kiryu Koko, right? Um, from Hololive, right? She's a Japanese VTuber organization, right? Uh, Freaking Hololive is out there, you know, doing their thing. And then she mentions Taiwan as if it was a separate country and she gets absolutely blasted. She ends up needing to leave Hololive. Like, dude, it's insane how much of a stranglehold China has on you know, basic entertainment and gaming just purely because, um, purely because they have lots of money, lots of buyers. It's actually wild. It's fucked up, honestly. That's what it is. They have to bend over backwards for the Chinese government. So when this happened over backwards, bro, they had to suck the suck his cock and clean it after he was done. Dude, the amount of 
freaking simpery that everyone has to do to China at all times is horrifying. Happens. They go scorched earth. They take the live stream down seconds after he says it, slap him with a year long ban, and even confiscate his prize money. And this only to keep gobbling China's knob. That's literally all it is. It's, uh, it's freaking glazing China, giving him the reach around too. It's going full on head ass down China's bussy. Even the guys in the stream are fired. Everyone, everyone even remotely associated fire, turning themselves into goddamn pretzels to find better ways to squeeze the different drops of cum from China's cock. Is this metaphor good? I don't know. We'll, we'll worry about this after. It's not long before the internet catches wind and people are furious. At one point, even Congress members have a go. After a what? I didn't know that. At one point, even Congress members have a go. Marco Rubio. Recognize what's happening here. People who don't live in China must either self-censor or face dismissal and suspensions. China using ads to the market as leverage to crush free speech globally. Implications of this will be felt long after the politics are gone today. Listen, I'm not saying I agree with everything Marubio says, but this is pretty fucking based. But what can you do about it? Ultimately, I believe in free speech at the end of the day, and uh, Blizzard has the right to fire people to keep, you know, sucking China's schlong and making money off them. Like, they have every right to do that. Even though I think ethically, they're wrong. Who cares about ethics when there's money? After a few days of pressure, Jay Allen Brack eventually comes out. He reduces the ban to half a year and grants Blitzchung his prize money back. What do you mean grants him his prize money back? He won that fair and square. You have no right to not give him his prize money. What the fuck? He also says that Blizzard's relationships with China had no influence on their decision. Wow. No one could say that with a straight face. What the fuck? Dude, what? Did you say that with a straight face? Bro, dude. Oh my god. Yeah, this had no uh, no uh, no influence with China. Blizzard is starting to look seriously not cool. Yeah. So they decide to go into BlizzCon 2019 with the big guns. And now after a few oh, days of pressure, okay. Jay Allen Brack eventually comes out. He reduces the ban to half what? announcing Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. Let's go. Also this is going to be great. Everyone loved Diablo 4 and Overwatch 2. So that Warcraft remaster they'd announced at the infamous 2018 BlizzCon is coming out next year. This'll be good. Oh yeah, everything is gonna turn around. Just keep your dicks in your pants, Blizzard employees. Back in 2015, uh -oh. Blizzard had set up a subdivision to remaster old games, the first of which would be Warcraft 3. And in January 2020, the highly anticipated remaster launches. And oh boy, the game is beyond terrible. No, stop doing that! Dude. Remaster has become, what's so sad is remastering makes sense. Think about it. You have a game that's made in 2003, okay? And now it's 2024, okay? God damn, 20 years later, technology has advanced. A game that was so beloved in 2003 should be remastered today to the, all the modern shit of today. However, comma, remastering has become an excuse to repackage stuff, make it worse, have some sort of message to it, and absolutely obliterate their own reputation because they existed as little cash grabs. It's mastered, but backwards. It's demastered. Like, dude, it, it's it's adapting Avatar into the Netflix Avatar, even though it was shit, right? It's it's all these adaptations, all these remakes, all these remasterings. They're, they're basically coats of paint as an excuse to resell a popular IP and make a lot of money. I think the only good remaster I could think of is Dark Souls 1. Like, that's the only remaster I could think of, and that's because FromSoft is literally the, uh, the Jesus Christ of video game companies. Um, it's absolutely insane. How, how bad remasters always are when it's the easiest job in the world if they just work really hard, you know? But they don't want to make something good. They're just banking on people buying the remaster because, well, it's a popular IP. It's like Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Everyone bought it when it came out and no one is playing it now because it's the same game. Here's why. Before launch, Warcraft 3's advertising touted multiple new features. Over four hours of cinematic new cutscenes, more story, let's go, let's and new go. voice acting. Dude, I have to do a Warcraft lore dive at some point. And a complete campaign overhaul, changing the story to be more in line with the current Warcraft lore. But when players log on, turns out absolutely none of this is in the game. What? Wait, what? 
40 plus hours of epic gameplay with 4 plus hours of reforged in-game cutscenes that didn't happen? This is after being advertised on the website for over a year. Wait, this didn't happen? They advertised it this way and it just didn't ha That's a scam. That's actually a scam. LIAR! There's also a ton of features what? from the original Warcraft 3 just outright missing. Yeah, I, I love when they do that. It's like we're remastering it by adding not a lot, but also by removing some stuff that no one will really care. Here are a few of them. No ranked play. No. What? No profiles. Uh, no. What? No. No account stats. Uh, no. Why the fuck would they remove this? No custom campaigns. No. No clans. No. No cross-region play for custom games. Um, no. And no offline play. Well, I don't understand. Why? Why would they remove any of this? This is literally demastered. I, I can't believe it. No. It's possible after a few patches, but it's a little complicated. Also, after some digging, people realize the main menu background is actually a Chrome-based web app. No fucking way. And is taking up more of your CPU power than the actual game. This, this is someone that doesn't care. This is a company that literally doesn't care. They're just seeing dollar signs, it's over. Online matchmaking sucks and kicks you out all the time. This is without a way to reconnect, by the way. Graphics are worse than advertised. Oh, Treason! Have you lost your mind, Arthas? The new art. Oh my god, dude, you're joking. Tre this was the trailer and this was the actual game? Oh my Treason. lord. Have you lost your mind? Dude, dude, I hate false advertising. It's so annoying. Oh my God. This isn't just like good advertising or based promotion. Mind Arthur. This is a scam. The new art direction is bad. Five of the game's maps are exactly the same as the original. And poor optimization, tons of crashes. It's the same game. It's just an excuse to sell more copies of the same shit. On this bugs. On top of all of that, Reforged is a mandatory update for everyone with the original game. Own the original with no intention of upgrading. Well, here's an additional 30 gigabytes of install size anyway. All of this amounts oh to one of the Lord. worst launches of a game in history. That's awful. And it's from such a massive company too. Like how, did, how do they do this? Didn't they know? Like I always find myself asking the question of, didn't they know this would fail? Like, didn't they know this would be awful? It's a release. It ends up at 0.5 out of 10 on Metacritic. Oh, Lord. And they wonder why I, I think piracy is kind of based sometimes. At the time, the lowest Metacritic score in history. Let's go. Let's go. At the time, but they're still Diablo Immortal, whatever it's for. Before being dethroned. Yeah, I told you. By Diablo Immortal. I told you. He told you. So naturally, oh. hordes of people pile in to request refunds. But wait, uh -oh. you've booted up the game even just once? <laughs> no. Sorry, you're not allowed. It's fucked up, man. Literally, it's it's just a money grab scheme. Get out of there. Quit, quit. You're done. But the crazy thing is, at this point, they were still profitable. There's so much outcry about the game, however, that Blizzard eventually caves and starts actually granting refunds. The game is so bad that the entire classic games division of Blizzard is completely canned. You're Bruh. fired. Get out of here. It also causes an upcoming Diablo 2 remake to be pushed back more than a year. Yeah. So it's 2021. Great. The remakes are taking longer to remake. That's crazy. And Blizzard its reputation is currently abhorrent but luckily overwatch 2 is just around the corner. Oh, hold on a second dude the overwatch 2 shit blows my mind oh god uh -oh. turns out that over the last two years the california there we go this is the stuff that like i th i think is the most important like honestly bad video games bad decisions pissing off players like this is this is small small potatoes all right this this is like meager beta shit drama this what we're about to see, this ain't drama no more. And I hate that people call it, oh, did you hear about the Blizzard drama? And it's literally people getting sexually assaulted. California Civil Rights Department had been investigating Activision Blizzard due to multiple reports of sexual harassment from staff. And by July 2021, God. they had enough evidence to file suit. The lawsuit states that sexual harassment, unwanted advances, oh, and groping are common within Blizzard, both before and after the merge. This includes the mention of an executive suite at 2013. <laughs> God, dude, dude, the editing is so good. Means BlizzCon. It's not a nice place. Yeah, just wait until the breast milk incident. In fact, some employees literally- Suddenly the Homelander clips throughout this video are gonna look really good. The Cosby suite. Then there's the alleged underpaying of women and complaints to both HR and the president repeatedly being ignored. But there was something else. The employee- Dude, it was like, <laughs> his defense in court's like, your honor, in my defense, I didn't mean to ignore her. I'm just, I'm just used to ignoring women. Your honor, like, you can't blame me for ignoring her when this is what I've been trained to do my entire marriage. Then the judge, who happens to be a dude, is like, sustained. He's breast milk. Oh, dude, the breast milk arc. The breast milk arc! 
it keeps being stolen. What? Uh, the Homelander clips? In the lawsuit, more than one employee alleges breast milk theft. It was more than one employee. How? How? Very clearly breast milk in baggies with a baby's face on it. Could be anything, honestly. Former producer claims. One day, I went to retrieve my pumped supply at the end of the day, and it was gone. <laughs> this, book, this is my favorite of the the, uh, the corporate. Like, <laughs> this is my favorite Blizzard uh, drama. We'll call it. The fallout is monumental oh, awesome. and makes headlines industry-wide. Because it's fucking awesome. You know the only thing that makes bigger headlines than actual crimes that are, like, awful? Crimes that are funny and pathetic. Few people are spared. Current Diablo 4 lead, gone. His character's name in Overwatch, also gone. Whoa, that's crazy. Level designer on World of Warcraft, gone. Head of HR, definitely gone. Warcraft Lee gone. Jay Allen gone. Their chief legal gone. Dude, that's crazy. The Wall Street Journal also alleges that Kotick knew about the whole thing. Dude, of course he knew about the whole thing. Oh my god. Dude. Listen, listen. I, I think that it's, um, a lot of people are really happy to play dumb about, oh, I didn't know that this was going on. When in reality, I think for the most part, people know what's going on. Uh, some people are really vile out there. Uh, and, uh, look, I'm not saying Kotick was one of them per se, but more often than not, when there's something going on, they know about it, even if they are ignoring it for the sake of saving face or not needing to deal with it, or it's stressful, or that once they start firing people, they have to start answering questions as to why they're firing people. So sometimes turning a blind eye is just a lazy and honestly cruel excuse. Uh, it's something that just exists over and over and over again. I know from VTuber companies, okay, uh, that will go without name that um, they know what's going on and they just ignore it on what's going on with their talent because why would they make a big deal out of it? And it's only once push comes to shove and they have no choice that they'll actually say, oh, we just heard about this thing, when in actuality they heard about that thing a while ago. I, I could give you many examples and I don't even want to get started on this, but like just from personal experience, I've reached out to VTuber agencies saying, you know, this really fucked up thing is going on. And they're like, what? That's crazy. We'll look into it. And then, uh, you know, doesn't doesn't really happen. Like, um, it's it's insane. It's insane. And they just don't care. Ignored it. And in some cases, even jumped in himself. Damn, I wasn't going to go that far. He denies most of the allegations. I did not. But eventually apologizes for a one-time instance where he left a voicemail threatening to have his assistant killed. Wait, what? He actually... <laughs> That's all fine, then. Water right. under the bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsors like T-Mobile, Coca-Cola, Kellogg, IBM, and Pringles also all jump ship from the Overwatch esports Crazy. league. And Activision Blizzard is hit with a class action lawsuit on behalf of its shareholders. What? Overall, no. The situation's not looking great. Wait, you mean like we couldn't get away with sexually assaulting all of these women for the last five years? But, 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 but. But why? Why? I didn't even know it was happening! Listen, listen, in my defense, when she was saying no while I was putting my dick in her face, like, I thought she was saying like, 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 oh, yummy. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what she was saying in my defense. Great. Activision. This is unacceptable, by the way. These guys should be in prison. Uh, you, you fucking do this shit? Get out of here. Get out of here. Blizzard denies most of the claims. And in June 2022, they investigate themselves and find no wrongdoing. Well, well, well. If it isn't the consequences of my actions. That's why I always keep making the memes about like Niji Sanji and stuff being a corrupt company because they also did the same shit. After a thorough internal investigation in all of our actions, we find no wrongdoing on our actions whatsoever. All right, dude. You know my opinion? 12 years, dungeon, no trial, dungeon, unacceptable! Overwatch 2. Dude, just someone at Blizzard just hit, you know, slamming the table. God, when I was assaulting them 10 years ago, no one cared. Why is it suddenly a crime? To God damn it. The woke mentality ruining everything. <laughs> you know, those, the woke just, God. The immediate reaction to Overwatch 2's announcement was one of confusion. Overwatch yeah. 1 was a monetized game with a thriving player base and regular updates. The yeah. kind of game that doesn't need a sequel. So this was a strange- Well, Megamind didn't need a sequel. But... Change move. Overwatch 2's development would also mean the end of support for Overwatch 1 in 2020, with us seeing no new Overwatch content for multiple years. So stupid, so dumb. Essentially killing the game. What? But with- But why would they do that? Why? It's just stupid. Overwatch 2. Blizzard reassures us it was all worth it. Yeah, yeah. Just Overwatch 2 is gonna have like uh, an adventure mode, like uh, all this uh, new stuff. Uh, 5v5 instead of 6v6. Crazy. Shiny new graphics. Crazy, we love that. We've seen, listen, 
the graphics in Overwatch porn is better than the graphics in regular Overwatch. You see, I didn't even know Overwatch is a game until way later. Anyway. Balancing changes, map reworks, six new maps, three new heroes, more than 30 new skins, a new game mode, a battle pass and cosmetics shop, and most importantly, and most importantly, the adventure mode, the story mode, the story mode, a PVE campaign. Yes. People had been longing for a story in People the People wanted a story forever. Overwatch universe, and now it was finally happening, and it was ambitious. Blizzard shows off a full campaign, along with hero missions, talents, and massive skill trees unique to each hero. Hundreds of missions at launch, they announce. A truly replayable campaign. And don't worry, with Overwatch 2, Blizzard tells us they were redefining what a sequel really means. That's great, because sequels usually aren't fantastic. Overwatch 1 players get all the new maps, updates, and heroes that release in Overwatch 2, and both player bases can cross-play together. That's huge. The purchase Everyone is gonna be so happy about Overwatch this. 2 essentially only granting the PvE mode. Okay, sold. Players are on board. 10th of March 20... God, when will they realize? When will they realize? They did redefine sequels. Like, they were right. They literally were right. 22, and Blizzard has an announcement. Look, we know we said hundreds of missions at launch, but, well, it's- We decided we're gonna lower that number a little bit to, uh, zero missions. Taking a while, so we're just gonna release the game now without it, and add it later. Then in June, they come out <laughs> oh, again. God. The game's now free to play, and launching in October. But anyway, on the 4th ah. of October, 2022, it goes live. The hype is real. There are some issues. Events are bad, tons of balancing issues. The looking for group feature is now just completely gone. But mainly, there's the new cosmetic system. In Overwatch 1, earning cosmetics was simple. Oh, just play the game, level up, and earn loot boxes that give you skins. Suddenly, you have to pay for it. Wow, crazy how that happened. You could pay for them, but that was completely optional. In Overwatch 2, things are different. Blizzard has now slapped on a seasonal battle pass system, where the bulk of cosmetics would now be unlocked. There's also a rotating store, and the prices there Bro. aren't great. It's like, people don't realize that, they, like, here's the thing. A lot of people loved Blizzard, like, as a company. Like, they loved it as a company. What, what, what do I always say, chat? What do I always say? Never love anything that doesn't have a butthole, okay? I've said this before, and I will say it again. If it doesn't have a butthole, do not love it, okay? This company is going to use you and abuse you. You are a cum sock to this company, okay? You are a fucking own a hole where they are going to milk every penny they can out of you. That is literally what it is all about. Now, you should support them if they're making good products. Hopefully, they'll continue making good products. But you have no allegiance to them, just like they have no allegiance to you. You can unlock skins for free through the channel. Do you have a butthole? I do have a butthole. That's why you should love me. Subscribe, like, I have a Patreon, link in the description. Patreon.com slash NuxTaku, give me money. Challenge system, but there's a problem. It takes about eight oh, months to get one. God. A simple character recolor takes almost four weeks. Oh my lord, that, that's insane. All of this means that it will take you around 327 years to get all the stuff you could get relatively quickly oh my for God, free dude. in what Overwatch were they thinking? 1. Better get playing. Also, there's now a new hero every other season, and they'd be locked behind the later levels of the season pass. Oh my god, dude. You literally have to pay the game now. Oh my god. Your options are spend every minute of your life grinding for them or pay up. Give me money. In Overwatch 1, they were unlocked straight away. Fans don't take kindly to these changes. But then in May 2023, Blizzard comes out again. So, that PvP hero campaign that we've been advertising and was pretty much the sole reason we made the sequel in the first place. Well, we decided it's not happening. Pretty much completely scrapped. No more talent trees or hero missions. Instead, we're just gonna pepper some PvE missions around every few seasons. What? What the f This was essentially yeah. the entire selling point for the sequel. Some of the remaining <laughs> story content- uh, My theory is this was literally the plan all along. Uh, I know that everyone thinks that it was eventually scrapped, whatever. Uh, I think this was always the plan. I think the plan was always getting people to buy shit and then uh, just not supplying. It's still planned with its first release on August 10th. But when it finally releases, it's only three missions. Blizzard is saying the game won't be getting any more story missions until at least 2024. They also add Overwatch 2 to Steam, and it instantly becomes the worst reviewed game of all time there. Let's go, breaking records. See, they are redefining sequels. They were so right. Let's
let's go. Dude, and you think that was bad? Oh Lord, Diablo 4. It's crazy to see how how massive they were and how successful they were and, and just watch them take L after L after L. Like that entire ride from, from win to win to win all the way down to L to L to L. This is the craziest graph I've ever seen. Like this is insane. The year is now 2023 and Blizzard's reputation has never been worse. So well, yet. When Diablo 4's release approaches, People are cautious, but on the 5th of June, the game launches, and it's surprisingly good. There are some issues here and there, but reviews are mostly positive, and over 10 million people log in and play, oh making Diablo 4 Blizzard's fastest selling game of all time. For the first time in years, Dude. things are actually looking up. And, and it keeps going and everything's happy. This game was of service, meaning it would receive free seasons of content for the foreseeable future. The first of which was launching in July. A month later, and in July, season one of the game drops. Oh, it is disastrous. And How could they do this? How could they do this? Wait, Diablo 4 was good? You, you just wait for the debate moment. No, no. I mean, it was. It looked good and great, and it looked in insane. And then, yeah. Reddit goes into a complete meltdown. Turns out, everything gets a big nerf including the Metacritic score. The Sorcerer Club <laughs> no. Us, which was already underpowered, is hit especially hard. Then there's the enemies being overpowered, much less XP, a bunch of reskinned dungeons and enemies, barely any new content, and zero quality of life changes. Everything here is wrong. <laughs> One streamer on Twitch tries to Wait, explain- Wait, what? Did they do the wrong math? 1,000 times 40% is 1,040? Oh, Lord, there's no way. They did the math wrong. Oh, no. Before the change is 1,000 times 40% is the bonus. And then it's 1,000 times 1 1.2 is the bonus. Oh, my God, dude. They presented it with wrong math. 40% of this would be 1440. Literally higher. They lowered the XP after. Oh my God. Changes. Everything here is wrong. <laughs> One streamer on Twitch tries to explain why this isn't that bad. Here's how that goes. This explosion is at, I actually just lost my hardcore character while trying to explain this to you. I changed my mind. I hate this season. And it Let's go. Let's go. That's our biggest supporter, ladies and gentlemen. Seems Blizzard also has a bit of a fixation on the battle. Unfortunately, we can no longer assault our staff. It's time to assault our games. Pass. Battle pass. Battle pass. Battle pass. Battle pass. Battle pass. Speaking of which, it gives paid players 666 platinum. The cheapest item in the store is 800. You're fucking kidding me. You're joking, right? Also, back when Blizzard was designing the menus for the game, they decided to place the Activate Premium Battle Pass button right next to the button you're constantly pressing to see your season progression. Oh my god, dude. It's literally insane. They're waiting for misclicks. They want you to misclick and accidentally pay whatever, 20 bucks to activate the premium. That's actually insane. Holy shit. That's kind of small. There's also no confirmation button. So if you want- <gasps> What? You pay without a confirmation button? Huh? You just mean to click on the campaign, you accidentally click on the a thing and you boop, pay 20 bucks? Without a confirmation button. My God! There's like the ads on like the piracy websites with the little X in the corner and another X in the corner. And one of the X's in the corner is just a link to another ad. Want to check your progression and accidentally misclick? Congratulations, you've just purchased it. There are multiple other confirmation buttons for other menu options in the game. Reset dungeon, that's a confirmation button. Refund is a confirmation button. Leave party is a confirmation button. Purchase the premium? Nah, then you just click it and it's over. Insane. So Blizzard's last few years- literal highway robbery. Holy crap. This haven't been great. Somehow Blizzard is now worse than Bethesda. It's, it's That's crazy. All they had to do is rape some women to get to that slot. That's nuts. Slowly become clear to people. With overreach from Activision, more fiscal concern, and most of the original talent having left the company, among other things. Among other things, the breast milk thief. No! Among other things, you know. Stealing breast milk. God damn it. That's my favorite saga for sure. Maybe Blizzard wasn't the company it once was. And after a back to office mandate in 2023, even more talent is leaving. So much talent that Blizzard is now actually creating crisis maps God, for what content dude. they can and can't get done. But with the acquisition from Microsoft, who's currently focusing on making good exclusives to slap on their Game Pass, some fans are hopeful for change. But for now, yeah. the outlook on Blizzard Entertainment remains bleak. Damn, what an insanely good video. 
And don't uh, forget about the epic. Yeah, War Thunder is, is an epic game that I'm happy is paying you for this video because you deserve to get paid for this video. What a fantastic video. Dude, great video. Uh, awful company. Uh, moral of the story, uh, don't support people that are uh, sexually assaulting their employees. Stay weird, fam? God, what a crazy saga. Like, subscribe, and this video was streamed live on kick.com slash See you there. Stay weird, fam.